Today, I'm with Ruth Toledo Altshuler, and she is such a supportive member of my community and of the various communities that she's part of. And she reached out to me about you know, what's going on in our world right now and how can we um, kind of approach it in, in a more mindful and um, productive uh, way. So um, Ruth, thank you so much for, for having this conversation. I'm sure that this is going to be relevant for a lot of people. Yeah. You're very welcome. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot we can kind of talk about, but I'll, I'll let you kind of start the start the this conversation and then I'm I'm sure I'm gonna have questions for you yes so. okay I welcome all your questions and uh, comments as well and and thoughts so that this is more of a, a both way sharing yeah. yeah yeah and just to those who are watching this you know at some time in the future we are in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic um, you know the Lots of countries are, are cities, states, countries are, are in lockdown. A lot of us are in quarantine. Um, and the economy is going through a free fall. You know, it, the stock market, of course, everyone knows, has heard, has dropped dramatically, which affects so many people's retirements. Um, and so many people have lost jobs. I mean, millions of people have lost jobs. Uh, and of course, it's not easy for us uh, small business owners. So Ruth, you have so many tools um, and kind of, yeah, modalities, tools that you learned over the years and practice that help, you know, help in times like this. So what's one that comes to mind for you? What's one tool or what's, you know, a way of thinking about this or? Yeah. yeah. Um one of the things that I thought when I um, imagined that we were going to have this conversation was uh, about how to meet a situation that you wish wasn't there. Yeah. And what do yeah. you do with it? You know, like when the, when, when the first, when, when things come our way and we say, oh no, <laughs> this is not happening. We, we can't, um, so there's this resistance and we would rather not have to deal with it and yet and, and of course what we're living now at this time I think for most of us it feels surreal it feels like almost we want to pinch ourselves and say yeah I, I was just I'm saying I'm gonna wake up from was, this dream yeah <laughs> was I was saying to somebody dream. like I feel like we've somehow gotten into an alternate universe, like something happened where it's like the timeline shifted and we're in a different world. Yes. And the whole world is experiencing this, which is yes. what makes it so dramatic. It's not just one country or one city. It's the whole world is going through the exact same thing. So I think that also creates maybe some kind of energetic, there's something in the yes. air. I, I, I keep thinking, oh, there's something in the air that's different, yes. that affects yes. all of our emotions right in our thoughts absolutely so on one hand there is this intensity this kind of like there it's the air almost like the air the the ceiling is low and and we we feel it and and i've been through situations that were somewhat like this before but never so huge and worldwide but but i've experienced these waves of a fear and, and, and concern and, and, and this real uh, pressure of, and, and this sense of perspective kind of lost, you know? So what is it gonna be now and how? And, and one of the tools that I've learned, one of the teachings that for me has been very, very foundational has been that when, an experience comes our way, if we're able to, for a moment, hold it in front of us and get a sense of the two sides of the polarity. So, okay. And I, I see a lot of people doing this. On one hand, we have this 
whole unsettled situation where everything that we were relying on and that we took for granted is shaking. And on the other hand, we do have the learning opportunity. So what can be, what are we learning with this? What, what, is, what are the qualities that are being called forth? that we need to develop. And when we're able to really feel that there is the two sides in it, and we're able to accept the experience, then it begins to work through us and, and we begin to be able to listen and, and allow certain qualities to arise within us to meet the situation. So. So that would be one of the first things is um, finding the two sides, finding the polarity in the experience and find how you can accept, yes, it's happening. It's inevitable. I just have to surrender to what is because yeah. it is right now. That's a very wise um, way of looking at it because a lot of people, especially on social media and the news are, are only looking at one side right, of the polarity. It's the disaster. It's the fear. Uh, it's the, you know, the depression, the discouragement. That's really easy to make news um, and the, the, the pending doom, but the polarity, you're saying that there's always two sides, isn't there? There's always, always two sides to, 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 to a situation. So what would you say, tell us more, maybe you can help balance it out a little bit. Like what, tell us more about that other side. Yeah, and I, I would actually like to bring up the fact that I also see in, in, in my Facebook feed, you know, there's also some people that are saying, Oh, and we stopped for these weeks and now there's no pollution and the planet right. is already healing. And in some ways it might be, but it may be a little bit of an idealized <laughs> version of it. Because there's more, there's more trees being cut down for toilet paper now than ever before. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 you know, it's not like the, the climate change heals in, in, in two, in two weeks, weeks you know <laughs> right. and so i yeah. i think we also need to be very careful around our idealized projections of saying oh and this is happening and nothing is going to be like it was and it's going to be a changed world after that and everyone will awaken and we're all brothers and sisters in this world yeah wait it's it's a big process and yet there is this opportunity. So, so I think in terms of the other polarity, I think it applies very much to each person. What are the qualities that I need to develop and, and, and bring forth into how I can serve right now? Um, what is happening to me internally in terms of how I'm reassessing what I really value in life, or maybe, you know, what are the things that are, that I want to really have and see uh, nurtured in my world and what is not. And I'm sure a lot of people of all different levels of consciousness, they're also going through this reassessment of what's really valuable for me and what's not. Yeah. But I think it's an individual thing for each one because it hits us in different ways. Mm. Um, can you, uh, you know, you work with clients on things like this, um, their, their own personal development journey, their own soul journey, um, their own healing. Have you noticed uh, any themes that have, are coming up recently uh, in Working yes, I, like, I notice. Yeah. Thank you for the question. I notice it, and I also notice it in myself, in my own journey. Yeah. That for for different people, depending on where they have layers of trauma, of um, instability triggering 
different experiences that they've had in their foundational years, a lot of things can emerge. And this is a moment for a lot of us to embrace wherever we have these areas within us where we, when we're unsafe, we tend to respond in, in, in ways that are uh, conditioned by our early trauma patterns. And so it is also a big opportunity for people to go deeper into their own healing, to address these patterns that have been there for a lifetime and even ancestral patterns as well. And to, to go there and embrace with compassion and do more of a deeper, even emotional as well as somatic healing. Because so you feel times like times like this really trigger people. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yes. It brings that up. Uh, unlike times where things are more stable. So this is, yeah. And this is the kind of stuff that you have been working with people on. Um, do you want to mention a little bit about the modalities you use to, to help people with this? Yes. And, and I think one of the big um, gifts that I've had in my journey was to learn the language of flower essences. And the language of flower essences is just so educational because it really teaches us about the polarities and how we can find the, the movement between one extreme and the other and, and then find how we want to navigate. And so for instance, when we're dealing with um, a situation of, that triggers fear. There's the opportunity to also grow in our courage and our ability to confront that fear and to master that fear. And as we transit between one side and the other, eventually we, we know when we're experiencing the fear that is healthy and helps us protect ourselves when you're crossing a street and you hear that noise and then you just step back and it's, wow, you know, okay, I'm safe. I was able to protect myself. That's the really healthy, sane fear that one needs to have. There's a, caution. a healthy place caution. for fear. Yeah. Yes. And yet, if they're being motivated by fear that they stop going, doing things, they're, they're afraid of uh, confronting situations it's just so good to develop that muscle of courage and ability to go for things that they need to be bold and go for them. And so the flower essences have really taught me a lot around these different polarities that we uh, meet in our life and in our healing journey as well. Yeah. Yes. Um... I'm glad you brought up courage because a lot of people now, I mean, myself included, have needed courage uh, in our work, you know, right now, because yeah, people's work is being turned upside down. They're, they're either being, you know, laid off or they have to do work in a totally different way. Those of us who are small business owners who have done in-person work, now we have to figure out how to support <laughs> most or every all clients online um yeah i just think about all the the body workers all the you know the massage yeah. therapists acupuncturists right. healers yeah. you know that now there's i mean yeah and and all the people doing workshops you know etc that are being canceled now the courage is okay now we got to bring this because the the work can be always be and part of the, I think one of the qualities that we're having developed now is innovation, yes, creativity. Yeah. I want to talk more about that. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's talk about this because. Yeah. But before I would like yeah. to just yeah, yeah. put one piece, because yeah. I think the creativity is our grand finale. It's the, I think that's one of the biggest opportunities that we have at this time. Oh. But I would like to bring one piece that I think is really essential, which is that we need to hold space for what's happening with us emotionally and also 
neurophysiologically because that's something you know the the what we're going through these weeks and even more so as things progress and escalate stirs up so much within us so i think we really need community at this time and even though community can't be gathering and hugging people but it can be so wonderful to feel that we can meet others who are going through the same thing and and that we are able to hold some circle space in which people can say even if just a tiny bit of what's going on with them i think this ability to to share and to feel that there is a space being held for one another it creates this sense of solidarity that ultimately also enhances the production of the good neurotransmitters uh, within us that truly help us in terms of our health to balance the more noxious effects of stress. So there's, there's a great uh, lecture by a woman, um, I'll remember her name at the end, but she has a lecture called How to Make Stress Your Friend. Yes. Um, um, Jane, Kelly, Kelly Muck. Is it Kelly Muck? Mac yeah. <laughs> there, there's these exactly. two sisters. They do. Yeah. They, do yeah. All, they both have great TED Talks. I know exactly which yes. one you're talking about, but yes, yes it's Kelly McGonigal, and I think it was. Exactly. And, yeah. and she talks about the difference between people who experience stress and yet they feel separate and isolated and how stress can really be bad for the immune system for the body and all of that under those conditions but when we're experiencing stress but we also have the sense of companionship and solidarity even neurophysiologically as well as emotionally it shifts because what we generate really helps the body to cope in a much healthier way and it also helps of course the mind to to this integration between the different minds so that we operate at full capacity because one of the worst things is that when we're paralyzed by fear or when we're feeling cut off and isolated and, and we're not in our hearts, what happens is we, we tend to operate in that loop of survival mode. And then we, we don't really have access to the richness of our capacities and ultimately to our creativity, which is what we need the most at this time. Yes, yes. It's so interesting you said the this these two different ways of being with stress because yes, it's so wise. Like you can be isolated and spiral or you can be within a community. It's almost like we're built for for being in teams, right? Like it's like we we evolved in teams and in, and in, in tribes to be able to survive and yes. there were many dangers uh when as we evolved humanity that we helped each other to survive through and now more than ever now we're doing this <laughs> online do you have um i know you uh, facilitate various online communities is there one that you want to talk briefly about that that's available for people um you know, well i actually have uh, some free online events yes, that's what for I was people about. who yes. really uh love plants as well mm -hmm. and it's a it's a situation in which we gather these these are free events and we gather to 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 gather attuned to one plant archetype each time and then we share our impressions and we receive the healing of that plant archetype and then we share that healing with the collective and those have been very special and at this time I think people are getting even more from these experiences of yeah, coming I, I wanna together. I want to be sure to get the link or put the link yeah. in the notes of the video. So those of you who are interested, I mean, Ruth does a beautiful presentation. So 
um, check it out and, and sign up for the, for the upcoming one. Um, so just, we have just a few minutes left. I want to definitely talk about creativity right? and, yes. and the importance of that. So I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you start on this. Yes. Yeah, so, so besides holding space for people's feelings and emotions, which I think we should all do in every kind of session that we hold, you know, like, okay, how's it going today? And, and just holding that space for what's going emotionally and really enhancing that heart connection and that sense of solidarity. And that brings our intelligence levels in sync again, which allows for creativity. Because when we're in the loop of survival mode, our creativity is not really accessible to us. And so it is when we're more in our heart space that all of these levels of our intelligence come together and then we can use the full powers of being connected to our let's say rational thinking our ability to plan but also to our intuition and to our inner knowingness and also to this ability of channeling our higher self like you say like you like to say where there's all these resources. I mean, we are souls that have been living hundreds and hundreds of lives. And there's so much that we as souls, even ourselves, there's so much that we know about surviving, recreating, and being able to meet the most adverse circumstances and rebound and come back. And so if we're able to operate in our full intelligence and that means being in our hearts accessing our inner knowing using the best of the fullness of our rational mind and our spiritual guidance that is when we're able to serve at the fullest capacity that's mm. what that we were beautiful. made for as yes. far as the evolved human being Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's the opportunity that I think each one of us has. And mm -hmm. we as communities and as humanity have at this time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. It's so uh, good. What a great reminder that we are way more capable than uh, we typically think of ourselves as. And when we are, you know, kind of stuck in the fear or in the, um, dismay or discouragement of a situation that is where we're not creative we're not tapping into the whole thing so do you want to say a bit as we um complete this conversation like what's something that all of us can do to access more of hmm. the whole how can we yeah. open the heart more and access the whole of our creativity yeah, I would say at this time, holding space to really be with our emotions, whatever they are, is one of the things, because if we can't just push it down and say, it's not there. So allowing ourselves to feel, sometimes we just need to cry, you know, and, and sometimes we just need to, to be with whatever we're feeling. That's one thing. And so that allows things to flow so they're, they're not stuck in our system. And then if we're able to, from there, really breathe and be in our hearts and feel that we are supported by the, the body of the earth, by the being, the living being of the earth, to feel that the living being of the earth, the earth is not going anywhere. The earth is here, it's holding us and also to feel that we're being guided and that there's you know millions of souls on the other side some of them have gone to just be helping us at this time so there's so much guidance that's available mm. so when we are in this space that we know we have community and we know the earth is really here and wants us to evolve with it. And we are able to also ask and listen to the guidance that comes 
I think that really enhances our ability. And it's a moment to moment thing. At each moment, how can I be in my heart? How can I feel the earth is supporting me? How can I ask for guidance for this situation now? You know, like, oh, I'm going to have this conversation with George. I didn't prepare anything, but please, you know, help me. And and then it comes and the words come out from you and you will know what to say and you will know how to create this different offering that you never thought of, but that you can bring forth because it wants to come to the world through you. Oh, yes. That's a beautiful way for us to send, uh, send the viewers on their way. Um, and so if any of you are feeling some healing and some uh, grounding based on this, I encourage you to check out the links in the video because, you know, please do go and experience Ruth's event and check out her website. Uh, Ruth, thank you so much for just reaching out and being willing to share um, these kind of nurturing uh, thoughts and perspectives that are so needed at this time. I feel, I feel better for this current because of this conversation. So thank you so much. Thank you, George, because I'm, I'm just so very grateful for the quality of the communities that you create and for all the many worldwide friends that I've made, including you, for the partnership that we have in this bigger transformative journey that we're all in. Yes. Yeah, we are in this together for sure. Thanks you.